Well, my father, um, you know, I like to mythologize, not pathologize, you know, but if you were going to go and give him a pathology, he was, you know, he developed a pretty severe paranoid schizophrenia when I was about 30 years old. And we had a beautiful relationship before that. You know, he was one of my best friends and we'd play chess and play golf and play tennis. And so much of the way that my mind works, especially from a rational side, um, was because of my father. He also, you know, invited me to go on my first psychedelic vision quest when I was 18, just graduating high school. So he set me on my path and I owe so much to my father. But then at 30, you know, he was gone and I could no longer reach him. He, he wasn't able to identify me as who I was. Actually, when he saw me at those points, he saw me as an imposter because he had an idea in his mind of who his son was. And I wasn't that even when I was showing up in the flesh. So I really lost my father at 30. And then we tried to reach out to him, tried to connect with him. He went, spent several stretches in mental institutions, but always found his way out and then basically barricaded himself in his home until, you know, earlier this year, um, you know, we, I came back from a trip and he had passed away in his house. And it's a really remarkable story of all of the things that transpired. Um, but ultimately it was a very, <laughs> it was a very potent process of using all of the technologies that were available from the Hebrew wisdom technologies of sitting Shiva, which was telling stories with all of his friends and families and really you know, bringing him back to life through the stories that we told and not whitewashing and not just being Pollyannish and telling all the good stories, telling all the stories, you know, telling how, how he'd fly into fits of rage. If you woke him up from a nap, sometimes, you know, he's like, he's like waking up a bear too early. I guess bears are kind of sluggish when you wake them up, but I don't know. <laughs> you woke my dad up from a nap. He was hot, yeah. you know? And so there's stories like that to the, to the amazing stories of abundance and possibility and all of the things that he transmitted um, to the these kind of psycho spiritual practices where uh, we would go into a medicine journey together and I'd, I'd find him in the in in a place where I could see the fractured part of his mind and then I could see his soul and work to kind of bring those two pieces together so in some ways during those kind of two weeks of mourning which I just paused everything else in my life and the entire thing was just focused on my father and also living and celebrating all of the things that he loved so when i would play three on three basketball like my dad used to do on the tennis court you know we'd play as hard as we could and then i'd huddle the guys around and i'd say like you know this is for you mpm this is for you dad you know like i know how much you love this and i just want to thank my brothers for being here and um and doing something that my dad showed me how much joy and how much love was there in that and through that process you know, I felt, and I still feel like closer to my father than I had during that whole 12 year stretch. Cause it was a strange limbo where he was alive technically, but he was dead also, but there was no ritual to let him go. Mm. So we did, we did so much to grieve him, you know, and so many tears and so much laughter and so much, so much that we brought into that that I really feel deeply at peace and I feel like he's there with me, you know, always currently. And if I reach to him in a, in a deep meditation, you know, like I can find him and I can hear his voice and I know he's there supporting me. So, you know, that process has been really beautiful and, uh, with my actual biological father. And I think, one of the things that's, you know, and I, and op definitely, you know, open to expand on any of that because I just shared a lot, but I also want to open up another, um, another bracket, which is that when I lost my father, I placed father on other people, you know, and I think I'd already, father to me went, meant something to do with the powerful masculine. You know, a masculine that had the power to to change my world. You know, my father was a very, very powerful man. He, you know, built himself up from nothing as a commodity trader and had radical abundance. And my father was he was a force. You know, and uh, and I think so. When I when my father left, I kind of placed father on other people, and that was also not a very healthy process because the only the only 
safe place to place father other than, you know, you can have your father participate in the father, but you got to place it on the capital F father, like the father, the archetype of the father. And I had to learn that. I had to learn that lesson because I got burned, you know, in different ways, placing father onto people. And I think we can do that with our own biological father as well, because everybody will fail to meet the archetype of capital F father or capital M mother. I'm very lucky that my mother participates, my actual biological mother participates in capital M mother to such an extreme extent that there wasn't a lot of turbulence on the feminine side. But with my father, there was. There was the shadow elements and then there was the the beautiful elements. What What's an example of you projecting father onto somebody else? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to give specifics of the people who I yeah. did that with, but it was basically looking to them for approval. Mm -hmm. Did I do a good job, Dad? Am I doing good? You know, are you proud of me, Dad? And I would never say that, but that was my attitude towards it. So I was always looking for approval, you know, the blessing of the Father. Like, am I getting the blessing? Am I getting the blessing? Am I doing a good job, Dad? And it really took the breakdown of some of those relationships for me to claim like, all right, enough. You know, like I'm not looking to any human to give me the blessing to say, I'm proud of you, son, other than, you know, God, source, the father, which is, you know, my own connection to spirit. And to really say, like, I'm proud of you, son, to myself participating in the spirit of the father. And that's been the only safe ground. And I think it is the only safe ground to go is your deep relationship with source. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm just reflecting on my own path. I feel like I, I really resonate with that as well, not having a uh, certain masculine or father kind of archetype and, you know, during certain parts of like upbringing mm -hmm. and how I maybe have, you know, outsourced that or um, made my connection through meditation kind of uh, that that fathering process to myself in many ways. And yeah. I think it's a beautiful way to be able to uh, source that what you need fully within yourself, but then also um, be in communication in, in those partnerships and in, in Ohana that you have to, mm -hmm. um, to work through those things and have those mirrors and reflections back to you of who you're being for yourself, really, in the eyes of another. Mm -hmm.